Rush Jane. Today's teenagers are often thrown back and forth between school, standardized testing, extracurriculars, and just being teenagers. Today's high schools are getting harder to stand out in. When everyone has high GPAs and outstanding SAT scores, each student must work twice as hard to differentiate themselves from the other talented high schoolers. Despite this, a few individuals have risen to the top and shown through. Harsh Jane is one of these individuals. Now, a student at Harvard, Harsh once attended the International Academy right here in Michigan. We have Harsh here today, and he's going to talk about how he navigated the waters of being a teenager and his experience in college. Hi, Harsh. So we are very excited to have you here today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Hirsch. I'm a, as Frisha said, I'm now a senior at Harvard College, and I graduated from the International Academy in 2013. Um, my, you know, just for a little summary of where I am right now, I'm about to graduate. I studied math and computer science, and I am doing one of two things next year, either working at Palantir, which is sort of a 2,000 person big data company based in Palo Alto, um, or I'll be working on my own sort of biotech company with one of my roommates. So still figuring things out. But just for a little bit of background on what my high school career looked like, I was sort of someone who very much specialized in one thing in high school. I, I spent a lot of time doing math and that was very much something that was a big part of my college career. Um, I'm happy to sort of talk about the college application process and what that all looks like, but my, you know, more than anything, I, I want to emphasize that much like many of the people listening, I did go through this struggle of trying to balance my standardized tests and my extracurriculars and my friends and my family and you know, sleep. And that was a very, very hard time. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. So what, what would you say helped you maintain that balance or achieve that balance in high school? Absolutely. I think um, there are a few answers to this. So I think, first of all, it's important to have some sort of an idea of what I wanted to do. I think if I had just gone into high school and tried to at every time make every decision on the spot, it would have been pretty difficult. But I knew going in that I was gonna spend a lot of time doing math. And so I applied to summer programs for math. I took classes at ICAE on the weekends. I did math competitions, I did math research, and that was a big thing that I knew I needed to block off time for. Other than that, I think it was really good for me to have a sense of who I was. And I think this is generally a big part of high school. Um, applying to college is not a formulaic process and there's no way to really just plug everything into some, you know, to check off certain boxes. But I, I really sort of, I realized pretty early in college that one of the things I loved to do was just be social, right? And, you know, spend a lot of time talking to my friends and things like that. And it was an important period of reflection for me to figure out how to hone that for something that could also lead to my academic success. What that ended up looking like was me spending a lot of time in these communities like the math community and some of the public speaking communities in high school and even just my high school community, figuring out how to bring those things together. So I was part of student government. I was part of, you know, sort of the more leadership oriented roles and a lot of math teams that I was on. And it was important for me to realize that that was a really fun thing for me to do. And it was a way for me to bring together the things I cared about and the things that were, you know, allowing me to have fun on weekends. More than that, I also, you know, a lot of times just wasn't a normal high school student, right? There were a lot of nights that I stayed up too late. There were a lot of times that I had to, you know, sleep less because I put off all of my work and no one figures this out. There's no, there's no single answer to how to just balance everything perfectly, but keeping the perspective is I think the most, is the most important thing you can do. So would you say these lessons that you learned, that tying your academia and community together, would you say that helped you in college or right now when you're ready to go into the real world? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's actually really funny. A lot of the things that when I was younger, I thought were not important at all, just, you know, I would get in trouble when I was little for talking in class way too much. And I think that sort of stood as an important representation to me of the things that I am good at and the things that I care about. It's the, the social element of college and the social element of the workplace and academia and all of those things moving forward is undoubtedly the most important part of it. Um, I've learned so much just, you know, it's my mom can tell me so much. My mom's friends can tell me so much, but having other friends my own age across the country who are both just friendly, good people who are there for me in times of need, but who are also doing really important, impressive things is an amazing way to understand myself and to understand where I fit into the world and all of these lessons. Um, I really, I really do think that high school is a great time to figure out what you care about and who you are and what things you're good at and how to use those things and how to bring them together into who you want to be. Okay, so what advice do you have for people who are already in high school, who are going into high school right now? Absolutely. So for people already in high school, I, I do, I want to emphasize that college is not at all formulaic. Um, 
I think for the most part, the people who get into top colleges, especially growing up in a relatively privileged, you know, community, I think much like I did, I, you know, I didn't have to go through anything particularly emotionally tenuous. I, you know, I had a stable family, all of those things. And that is a huge privilege. And as a result, I think the, the extent to which you need to prove yourself is to, for me and for most of the people like me, I think we all specialized in one thing in some capacity. Um, I obviously, for me, that was math, but for other people, you know, I have friends who were pages in the Senate when they were younger. I have friends who did extensive bio research. I have friends who just, you know, started a homeless shelter in their hometown. I think it's a lot of times it's th this concept of understanding what you care about also allows you to then be really deliberate about like really going hard with that one thing. For me, I also, I, I also like pretty sincerely believe that the only way you can ever prove that you care a lot about something is by committing time to it. And it's easy to try and do really quick things that show that look like they are, you know, a nice line on a college resume, but passion ends up shining through. And for me, the fact that I was spending so many hours of my week doing math and involved in these communities, I think was a really telling part of who I was and what I cared about. My general advice to a high school student is that it's important to be deliberate and it's important to think about the way that things are presented. You know, those are, those are definitely important. You know, you want to make sure that when you put together your college resume, things look good, but it's also important to substantiate that with actual passion and to substantiate that with actual care. Um, for every achievement that I or any of my peers was able to put on their resume, there were many hours of hard work sitting at a desk alone in their house that never got put on a resume. And I think understanding that there is the substance behind those achievements is really important. There are no shortcuts. And if, you know, if you, if going to Harvard or if, you know, getting into a top school is something you care a lot about, then it's important to actually put in the substance behind that work. So what would you say was the age or the turning moment for you when you realized that you wanted to go into math or you wanted to attend Harvard? That's interesting. So I actually, so when I applied to Harvard, I actually got waitlisted initially. Um, they, I applied early action my senior year and they, you know, in December, I found out that they wouldn't make a decision on my application until March. So at that point, I didn't think I was going to Harvard. But in terms of the age at which I made these decisions, um, it's a lot of people told me when I was younger that the idea you have of who you are at 15 will be nothing like the idea of who you have at 18, which will be nothing like the idea of who you have, who you are when you're 18 or 21. Like things keep changing. But for me, I knew that I cared a lot about math pretty early. I think I was 13, 14 years old, um, maybe even earlier in, in middle school and elementary school. And I just realized it was something I cared a lot about. The point at which I started actually committing a lot of my time and energy to it came a little bit later, for sure. I think early in high school, late in high school, you know, it, it was all a process. But I think it was always clear to me that I wanted to, it just honestly, it was clear to me that I wanted to go to a pretty top university. I had had the chance to spend time at summer programs and other sort of communities outside of Michigan at a lot, you know, with a lot of people who were going to go to top schools. And I really enjoyed being part of that environment. I really enjoyed being around people who were very good at things that I knew nothing about. That for me was the most enticing part about coming to Harvard. And I, I really, I think it's silly. I, and I did this in high school, but it's silly to get attached to one school. You know, they're Harvard, Stanford, MIT, Yale, and they're all, they're all the same. They're all like very good schools where you can be around a lot of interesting people. Um, in terms of the age, I think it is important if you want to do something like that to have some sense of who you want to be in high school and to be a little bit deliberate about the decisions you make. And especially starting my junior year of high school, I really began to think about the way I was presenting things and what my narrative looked like. And if a college you know, application reader read my resume and read my essays and read my transcript, who they would think I was and what they would think I would contribute to the community of, of you know, Harvard students. Um, I, my, my biggest advice, or not my biggest advice, but I think one thing to keep in mind when you're applying to college is that if I'm someone reading applications, I want to put together a class of students who have diverse interests, diverse backgrounds, the willingness to bring those backgrounds together to really create a vibrant intellectual community. And the thing that you need to sell to a college application reader is what you can contribute to that community. So starting a you know homeless shelter in your hometown, which is something I know one of my friends did, is a really clear symbol of your passion for community service and you know actual real care for the world around you. Um, and that to me is very different than spending 
five hours a week working at a homeless shelter nearby and just sort of having that as a checkbox of, you know, I care a little bit about the world and I'm, you know, my community service is done. Um, I, I really, I, this notion of substance behind the things that you put on your resume is something that I care a lot about and something that I really believe does shine through when you're applying to college. Okay, so if you could go back and relive your high school experience, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Uh, I would definitely sleep more. I, I think my, I, this has probably been a trend with what I've been saying for the last you know, couple minutes. My perception of how college worked was very, very long. I thought I needed a perfect SAT score. I thought I needed a perfect GPA. I spent a lot of time fretting about the smaller things that in my mind ended up very much taking a backseat to what I really did care about, which was you know, math and public speaking and the things I spent a lot of time on. So not fretting about the difference, a 35 versus a 36 on your ACT is never going to be a difference for whether or not you get into a top school. Like it won't. Um, I, I know people will say, but you know, if you have two students who are totally identical and one is a 36 and one is a 35, then the 36 will get in. But that is just, that would never happen, right? It's the things that will end up shining through about you are the things you actually cared about. So it's important to get good standardized test scores. It's important to have a good GPA. Those certainly matter. But above a certain point, the returns are completely, completely diminishing. And it's important to actually spend the time on what you care about. So I would certainly tell my high school self that. Um, I think one thing I'm really happy about that I did in high school is that I made friends in a lot of different places. And that has ended up being really beneficial for me even now. I, the, so I did the Armel, um, the American Regional Math League, and there was a Michigan team for that. And just last week, my Armel coach from when I was a, you know, all from eighth grade to 12th grade was in Boston and we got, you know, lunch. So it's been, you know, I like see people still who mattered a lot to me in high school. The ICAE community has stayed strong. Just generally the South Asian community in Michigan stays very strong. My friends always joke to me that if there's an Indian person that they find on the internet, I probably know them because that's, you know, that's how strong the Indian community is. And that's something to really, you know, it's, it's, it was very easy for me to make fun of my parents when I was growing up about how many people they knew and how everyone knew them. But it's also really valuable because those people will be there for you both in a personal sense and in a, uh, you know, in the workplace sense. So I'm really happy about the communities I've built and about the way that I was able to prioritize that in high school. Cause I think it's been much more important than I ever would have realized. So how do you think that your support system with your family and the Indian community, like you said, how do you think that shaped you as a person going into college in the real world? Yeah. Oh, that's an, that's a great question. Um, there, so, for me specifically, my parents have been very good about pushing me academically, but also reminding me and being a good emblem of the fact that being social is really important. And I think that, especially in the math community, which as you may expect is not always a social one, has been a really good lesson for me. Um, more generally, I think the influence of South Asian culture and things like that in my life have taught me that I think there's something about just the grit of our parents who grew up in a different country and came here and have made lives for themselves and are now just doing like really amazing things and they're that like seeing that firsthand has been really important for me just to see you know what that looks like i also think that there are the the values of friendship and family and things like that never stop being useful and it's amazing to see that in action with our families the final thing with that is that for a while in college, I think I almost tried to distance myself from my South Asian identity. I was here with all of these sort of, you know, rich, white, New England, like, you know, very cool things I didn't really understand. And I thought that that was, you know, what I aspired to be. But as college has gone on, I've come back and sort of realized that, you know, you can see the Indian flag on my wall. It's literally like, it's such an important part of who we are. And other Indian friends of mine are looking out for me more than anyone else is. And even when I go to interviews, I feel like people are totally aware of who we are and what we come from. And there's just like a bond that's really important. So I would say in general, like use this community to your advantage. There are friends of my parents who have been very useful for me as I've looked for jobs. Um, there have been just generally like this community is one that's really powerful and it's one that a lot of people don't have. So it's, uh, you know, use it to your advantage. So thank you, Harsh, for speaking with us and sharing your insight. So this video was brought to you by DES. DES tutors every week in STEM and English, and we try to help our society. If you're interested in this, you can visit our website, www.toyeducation.org. Thank you. Thank you so much.